In this video, I'm gonna walk you guys through how the post scheduler actually works as a serverless application and show you guys a little bit more about the architecture. So uh, it's really, really simple, a simple serverless project. Uh, we actually only have two functions in this project where we have basically a GitHub webhook and a cron job set up for us. And just to look at the architecture here, I'm gonna zoom in. So we have the GitHub webhook. Basically, you know, when any issue or pull request is comment on, commented on and you put that scheduled uh, block in there, it will then trigger a webhook to go to API Gateway, trigger our Lambda function, which we'll look at here in a second, and then save that item in a DynamoDB table. And then the actual publishing or you know, merging that branch in the master, so your site rebuilds, uh, is just a simple Lambda cron job that uh, by default runs every hour. Uh, again, you can change that to uh, every minute or every day or whatever frequency you wanna set that at. But basically, when the item in the DynamoDB table, so let's actually look at our Dynamo. So this is the uh, item that we scheduled for six here. Uh, basically, uh, when this time passes, every hour we check the cron, and basically, if it's ready to go, we publish it. Uh, so we'll remove it from the DynamoDB table, merge that branch into master, and our site will rebuild. So that is really it uh, in terms of what the two functions do. Um, let's actually take a look at the two functions. So inside of handler.js, uh, we, we point into our two different functions. Uh, here we have the GitHub webhook listener. We'll take a look at that one first. So uh, basically the event comes in and we parse it, validate that it's actually from GitHub and is, has our secret token so nobody can just trigger this you know, willy nilly out there on the internet. Um, then we make sure that it's a pull request, uh, which you can also do in the GitHub webhook, which will be in another video, how to set that up. And then we basically just check if our comment has that uh, scheduled message we go ahead and parse that, uh, go through and uh, validate the user here, get some pull request data for the Dynamo table, then put the item in the Dynamo table and then just call back success. Uh, and we also post the comment back to GitHub. So we know that our scheduler is functioning correctly. Um, and then vice versa, if there was a, a canceled request, so if uh, the comment, the scheduled comment was deleted, this code right here fires, basically says, oh, it's a issue comment and the action was deleted. So go ahead and run the cancel schedule post and that will go ahead and remove um, the item from Dynamo. So it doesn't actually you know, schedule, uh, the cron doesn't know about it and it won't schedule uh, and post when you don't want it to. So you can cancel uh, anything that you want or reschedule for later dates or past dates. But uh, yeah, so that is the GitHub webhook listener, really simple <clears throat> Lambda function. And then the cron job, uh, equally pretty straightforward, where we basically are saying, hey, uh, you know, cron job, go trigger this Lambda function to scan our table. Then if uh, loop through all the items, and if the scheduled post time in Unix uh, time format is less than right now, this moment in time, go ahead and merge in that pull request, then delete the item from the table, then grab the branch data uh, so we can delete it if it is in our own repository. If it's uh, external contribution from someone else's uh, fork, uh, this doesn't actually run. Uh, and then finally we post the, hey, congratulations, you've published uh, the scheduled post message back on that pull request. So we know that everything worked as it should. And that is really it in a nutshell. Um, you could put an HTTP endpoint on this as well and actually get the items back. So if you wanted to you know, create a UI for like what scheduled posts are coming, uh, for your team, you could do that. Uh, this actually returns all the items from the database, uh, which we might do in the future, but I left it open uh, for you guys to check out. But that is it really. The um, There's really just the two functions. 
And all you really need to do to get configured is uh, go ahead and copy the config uh, .prod.example.json into just config.prod.json. But in the next video, I'm gonna sh walk through the complete setup of how to set this up for your static site. So uh, make sure to check out that next video and I'm gonna walk you through step by step.